when, when I was just praying this afternoon, I, I saw two conditions I want to start the meeting praying for. The one was I saw maybe more than one person, but you, you get like these splitting headaches on the right side. It's almost like it comes in from the right and it almost just it just paralyzes you every time it hits. I don't know if it's it's not a mic. I don't know what it is, whatever. It's not nice. So does anybody get those? All right, would you come forward, please? And the other thing I felt like praying for is if you have tumors, lumps, or cysts in your body, doesn't matter where, I want you to come forward. Right? So tumors, lumps, or cysts. you just stand a little bit more to the front that I know who's who would you guys come and stand close here and just make a line next to each other JC Chuck you guys whoever wants to pray you're welcome all right who's here for the headache so that we can disqualify the rest all right so that's the two of you thank you Jesus thank you Lord I just release life right now Jesus name I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Leave right now. Jesus. Jesus, right now. Go. Go. In Jesus' name, right now. Thank you, God. Shokataba, Jesus name, right now, right now, Jesus, whoa, I want you guys in front, I want you just to just kind of soak in this presence, it's so awesome, Jesus. Thank you, God. Uh, thank you, Lord. What was your problem? Um, okay. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you right now. Jesus' name. Fire of God, just come right now. While you're standing here in front, I, wherever that lump or tumor or cyst or whatever it is, wherever it's located, I really believe like, like the fire of God is just going to come even as you stand. So just close your eyes. Even there's nobody with you. It doesn't matter. Thank you, God. Jesus' name. Fire of God just come right now. Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, name. Shut up, 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 up. Jesus, 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 thank you, God, right now. I command you just leave. Jesus name. Thank you Jesus. Thank you God. Thank you God. Thank you Jesus. Just touch her right now in the name of Jesus.
Jesus' name, fire of God, just come right now. Jesus. Thank you, God. Just fill them right now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Just fill it right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I want you guys just to stay here. Don't leave. And I, wa I want you to stretch open your hands just for a minute. If you're standing in front, I want the catchers to be behind them. Thank you, God. There's something this weekend about the presence. There's something that God's awakening about His presence in our life again, and, and that our full provision is in it, your healing is in it, your deliverance in it, is in it, your, your financial breakthrough is in it, your, your heart or soul healing is in it. And I feel I want you guys just to stand, and I'm even going to ask the music team if we can just shut everything down for a minute. I literally just want you to stand before the Lord in silence and just wait. Just wait. Close your eyes. Just wait. Yeah, maybe I should do that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just wait. Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Just wait. Keep waiting. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. I want you guys, even as you sit in the, during the service, I want you guys, if you can, test it. Right? If you can test it somehow, if it was a lump or something that you could feel, I want you to see what's happening. But even as we continue, just... Uh, just see what he's doing, okay? awesome worship guys thank you so much amen amen wow would you mind if i read you a testimony i just felt i wanted to do it because it's cool okay i'm not gonna mention the names it doesn't matter who it is but this is the story it wasn't me though i wish it was but i want to read it because i want to encourage your faith and um I want you to see, this is what God is doing now on the earth, okay? I, I was ministering in Stuttgart, Germany this weekend, and there is a man that was raised back to life after being dead four days. That's already awesome, but I want you to hear this part. 
The church was using the manual on how to raise the dead. <laughs> Believer's Guide to Miracles, Healing, Impartation, and Activation. So now you know it's not David Hogan, all right? But <laughs> that was featured on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. After teaching from the manual, they laid hands on prayer cloths. And one of those cloths was laid on a man who had died in another city in Germany. He was three days dead in the morgue, morgue, toe-tagged, embalmed, and in the casket with people coming dressed up to the funeral. <laughs> now, this is 22 October, so this is, like, very recent. The grieving, believing wife put a prayer cloth on him and went to the restroom. When she came back, she noticed his hand had moved to another position, but didn't think anything about it. I mean, if you have prayed for a dead body, I, I, I know, yeah. It's this weird thing where you really want them to get up, because that's why you're there, right? And then suddenly a, a little breeze moves into the room, and stuff starts moving, and you want to run away, because it's <laughs> freaky, Right? So your mind really does play tricks on you in these situations. So anyway, shortly after, he, that's the embalmed dead man, began to have red splotches on his body, and the doctor was called to examine him. They found a pulse and rushed him to the hospital still in the casket. <laughs> he is alert and crying, but not able to talk just yet but a true testimony to resurrection. The media got hold of it and is trying to make a wrongful doctor suit against the hospital. Because So now what happened is they're blaming it and saying it's negligence, that he wasn't dead, that they tagged him. How ridiculous that is. This is a full-on miracle from the manual. I just wanted to share that with you because I think it's awesome. <laughs> Amen. So... God is still moving in, in a way like this, and God is still wanting to do that in our generation. He's busy doing it in our generation, and He's looking for someone that would put up His hand and take a prayer. I mean, how hard was that to take a prayer cloth? No, seriously. How hard was that? Right? Do you see how simple this, this stuff is if we start stepping into under, understanding of what God actually says about us, who we really are, what our purpose is, what is normal and what is not normal, okay? We, we are so wired for more and for the power of God and to walk in a different reality than the one we're seeing, okay? And God is constantly inviting you into that place and saying, listen, come, there's, there's something extra. Who, who's going to take the prayer cloth? Who's going to not overthink things and just be, you know, what He designed us to be without making this hard? Right? I have a friend, his name is Surpresa. He says, you, he, he always says, stay away from the table of reasoning. Right? Stay away from the table of reasoning. Don't step into that place where everything is about, you know, your thinking and your intellect and why not and why this shouldn't and why it's not possible for God to do this. Right? Because that's usually what we do is we're so good at telling God why this is not okay. Even though we're believers, right? But we're really good at, at, at kind of looking at a situation, hearing a testimony like that, and then figuring out why this is not going to work for him. Okay? And I want us to get over that this weekend, to get out of that place of reasoning and to really step into the Spirit of God. And just to become free in our being to actually express God for who he is. Is that okay? Can we try and do that? I'm going to try with you, okay? I felt a weird thing, Jason. I hope it's okay with you. But, um, okay, that was easy. Um, I've never done this, but I feel I'm going to do it, so why not? I want you... <laughs> you know how David Hogan puts the cloths here in front and, you know, all of that stuff? And I saw the envelope. I don't know why it's there. Is there a reason for that thing being here? What, what's the reason for this? Who's on, who lost his envelope? Right? But I actually feel like if you need a financial breakthrough, I want you to put your wallet here. 
right? Not everyone. And, and just the, I don't know, orderly about this. We all need a financial breakthrough, but I mean you're really, <laughs> you're really in trouble, okay? I mean, it's, it's like if God doesn't come through, you're done. Not, not you want a nice, well, you can want a nice vacation, but that's not what we're talking about. Is that okay, JC? I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just caused you a security problem. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> did I tell you about the time we did the jackets and the one guy thought it was an exchange program? <laughs> so, <laughs> we, had, we had guys from one of the church in a squatter camp, so they came to the meeting and they thought it's just such an awesome church. You put an old jacket down, you get a new one. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> If you, if you don't have a wallet, then, then it's really just faith. You just put it down there by faith. Yeah, just seed or whatever you want to put down, uh, imaginary. Yeah, you can. Is it on silent? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking messages, all right? <laughs> all right, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. There's something in that, isn't it? Yeah. I feel it's like a season where God's going to start doing stuff like this more and more, where we're actually going to just find money in places. Yeah. Yeah. I really think so. Like in the mouth of a fish, you get your tax money there. Because there was this guy in the Bible, his name was Jesus Christ. Yeah. He did stuff like that. So that makes it legal. Okay? That makes it legal. It's okay for God to come and move in a way unexpected. Because sometimes people don't hear the Lord. And you're stuck because they're not hearing, but time is ticking, so we need to get a move on. And maybe God can just release that angel, the same one that put the coin in the fish's mouth, right? So in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just release favor. We just release supernatural provision, Lord, in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, and this is not about show. This is not about any of that, God. But you know the needs of your people. You know, Lord. And I pray that we'll start seeing something in this area tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen? amen. All right. And I've got such a weird feeling about tonight, and uh, it's a good one, but it's a strange one. I feel fearful about tonight. I don't know why. And, uh, and I, I think it's a good thing. I actually feel fearful about the whole weekend. Uh, when I was praying for just throughout the week, it's the, like really the fear of the Lord is on me for some reason. And... Uh, I think it's because he wants to do something special and unique. And um, I really hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> so what I want to talk about tonight is the season of the Lord. Okay? The season, not seasons. The season of God. And I want to just share on that, and, and we're just going to hope that it releases something in your hearts, right? Um, this wasn't my plan at all this afternoon. I actually thought I'm going to talk a completely different direction. And God just started pushing me on this thing. And this, so this is not something I'm walking out yet, but I do see it. And I believe it's something God wants to take the body into. Where we start functioning out of a supernatural season and not the seasons of the world. Do you understand? There's a big difference. Because there's a season, there's a position in the spirit, in God, that looks that is not affected by, by the natural. It's not ebbing and flowing with, you know, spring and autumn. And, and too often I hear us speak of, you know, I'm in this desert season. I use the words myself. And it's, uh, you know, I'm in this desert season. Oh, man, it's such a dry place right now. Or, you know, I'm just in this season or that season. And, and I, I feel like God wants to blow the lid off of that thing a little bit, Right? Because the more I, I look at it, and, and this afternoon, is specifically God was just starting to speak to me about His season and some things that He put in place 
that, that is so different than the language that we so often use, okay? Because there's a release in Revelation. You understand that? Hosea 4, verse 6, my people perish due to a lack of knowledge, right? That knowledge is it's revelation. It's experiential knowledge of God. It's not a head thing. It's, it's a heart thing. It's something you've walked out and seen, and you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, right? And, and there's something about a lack of revelation that causes us to perish. Literally, we die. We disintegrate when we dry up in the area of revelation. Do, do you hear me? So revelation is critical to who we are as believers, right? A place of the knowledge of the Lord is critical in our walk and, 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 and in what we're going to manifest on the earth. Because if we lack in that area, if we dry up in that area, we literally perish. Okay, that's the flip side of the verse, right? We, we literally die. How many of you have been in a season where you struggle to get revelation out of the Word or out of the Spirit? And Yeah, and you know that feeling that you get? I don't know about you, but I get anxious. I'm like, whoa, something's wrong. Like, why is it so quiet? I hate that, right? And I understand that sometimes you're still living off of yesterday's revelation. I get that. And that's fine, because sometimes He speaks and, and all of that. But what if there's a different season that He wants to open up over us? Because I'm seeing something in Scripture that contradicts even my opinion or my experience from the last couple of years, where I believe there's a different flow that God wants to release in the season, right, in His season, that's going to accelerate the body of Christ into a consistent flow of the life of God through you, right? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of moments, I'm tired of, oh man, it was so awesome back in 2016 when God just moved in those meetings and it was amazing. But, and then it's three months later and oh wow, God did something awesome again. It's what JC spoke about last night. I want a consistent flow, a consistent release of Him in me and through me, right? And I, I think we need to break out of, out of the natural and step into the supernatural season of God so that we don't get bound up by this stuff. We don't get stuck in it. Because there's a different way of living, and he wants to give it to us, right? In Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 14. Do I need to read it, or can I just tell you? Okay, you, you can trust me. I promise it's there, right? <laughs> Ask Chuck, okay? <laughs> right? And Chuck, I even feel for you like there's a, I don't even like that word so much, but I am going to use it, but there's a mystical revelatory season that God wants to open up over you, and it's going to be different. It's, it's like there's a presence that's going to start coming around you and into the room when you start speaking and teaching, because there's a different realm of revelation, and it's, you have revelation, but I mean, there's a different, it, it's, like a John the, it's like a John the Revelator, a Daniel, a Joseph, a Ezekiel. It's a different kind of prophetic that God's going to start bringing into your world, or you're going to step into that world, whichever way around. And with it, there's going to be tangible manifestations around you, and, and you're not always going to be aware of it, but, but things are going to start happening in places. People will start feeling, literally, and I know it's, we don't walk by, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight, but then there's a place where God manifests and it's tangible. And it's a tangibility that's going to come around what you say, preach, teach, and do more than what you've ever experienced before. And it's some, something like people's going to start tasting something of heaven more than they've done before around you. So God, I just want to pray for that release. I want to pray that that realm will open up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. But in Mark 11, it's this famous story where Jesus walks and he's looking for figs to eat off of this tree, right? So he gets to the tree. It specifically states that it's not the season for figs, okay? And Jesus looks at the tree, and he's, like, not impressed at all, at all. He's like, why are you not, why is there no figs on you, right? Because the king wanted fruit. <laughs> the king wants fruit. Do you hear me? Church, 
He wants fruit. I know it's not the natural season for figs, but he wants fruit. And he looks at the, the, the thing and he, and he rebukes it, right? He just, actually, he just spoke to it. He's like, I don't know what he said. I can't remember. But it comes down to, you're going to die, tree. <laughs> right? And then a day or so later, the disciples walk by the tree and they're like, oh my goodness, the tree died. And they all freak out about the whole thing, and, and Jesus starts teaching them, and he says, why are you surprised with this whole thing? Didn't I tell you that if you speak to this mountain and you believe it, the mountain will lift itself up and move, right? We all know the story, the famous Mark 11 thing. But the point I want you to see is that here comes the king, the creator, and he walks onto this, this situation where it's not the season, yet he's expecting something from the tree. And we look at it and we think, well, that's so harsh, Right? How could he do that? But he's, he's showing us that there's a different reality to live out of that is not linked to the, the seasons and times of this world, right? You're not, you and me, we're not bound, we're not tied down to the mundane, the reality around us, the, the, the politics, the, the economics, the fuel price, the racism, the whatever it is. That's not what drives us. That's not what allows us to prosper or not. Do you understand? We live from a different reality. There's a different world that, that we live from that God is inviting you into, and He's showing you something here, saying that He, and because you live in that, He can actually expect fruit of you in every season. In every season. There's an expectation of fruit from your life because your source is different. Right? He's, say to somebody next to you, he's looking for good fruit. Yeah. Right? Jump with me to Psalm 1. Because the question is how, am I right? How do I do this? Psalm 1. And I'm going to read one or two verses, and I'm just going to jump around a little bit, all right? But it said, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive. That's interesting. Nor stands inactive, Right? In the path where sinners walk. So the point is, don't be in it, don't be on it, don't be inactive on the path. You're on the wrong path. Get off of it. It's the wrong path. Just don't be near it. What are you doing there? Now really, what are you doing there? Why are we dabbling with pornography? Why are we even close why? Why are we gossiping and thinking it's okay? Why are we even listening to it? Nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. Right? God is saying, listen, this is not your place. You're blessed when you avoid those things, so avoid them. Just get away from that stuff because it will ruin your season. It will bind you to the seasons and the times of man, the purposes and the plans of man. I don't want to be at the mercy of man. We're not supposed to be at the mercy of men. We serve men. We love men. We humble ourselves before men. But I'm at the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. The life of God is my source. His time, His season, that's what I'm interested in. Your plans and your purposes, that's great. Make sure it's God, do it. But I don't need to bow, you know, to what you want and desire of me. I need to be obedient. And so do you. So watch out where you hang out. So it's about location, right? Verse 2. But His delight and desire 
are in the law of the Lord. And on his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God. I want to repeat that. On his law, the precepts, the instructions, and the teachings of Bill Johnson. Who is awesome, by the way. Or Bobby Connor. Or, no? The teachings of God. God. We need the body. We need the gifts. I mean, you're listening to a teaching right now, right? So to tell you it's wrong would be foolishness, okay? <laughs> but you understand that whatever is taught here, whatever is taught anywhere, it's your job to search it out in Scripture and to understand if it's really the teaching of God. Is it really what God is saying? I tell my people in the trans guy, I... I I tell them regularly, I tell them, taste me. See if what I'm saying is the truth. You go and look in your own Bible if it makes sense. If it doesn't, then why are you listening to me? Get out of here. <laughs> really, go to another church, please. Because it's deception then. It's worthless. And there'll be mistake and error in every teacher. Don't, we, nobody is perfect. Nobody gets it right fully. It's impossible. <laughs> So obviously there's grace, but if it's not the law of the Lord, if it's not the teaching of God, which you're actually supposed to get firsthand from Him, then maybe it's time that you shut some things down and get into the Word for yourself in this season. What is He saying you must do? If you listen to what J.C. said last night, that's about a personal experience with God. What is God speaking to you? What is God showing you out of Scripture? And then we come here together, and when whoever's standing in front shares, then we all go, oh, wow, God's been talking to me about this the whole week. That's what it's supposed to be, right? We gather, and something is confirmed in our life, or something new is opened up. Uh, I have said this before, but a disciple, uh, a, a rabbi, the way you make a disciple is by leaving people with a question, Right? That's what rabbis did. They asked questions, remember? So if you want to be smart, don't answer. Just answer with a question, <laughs> which is hard. Right? That doesn't count. <laughs> okay? But the idea is that, that you actually, what would be the right word? Agitate. That's not right, but almost. You, you provoke, that's the right word. You provoke something in the person, so that they go and see God for themselves. You open up something so that that question stirs on the inside, so that you go on your knees and you say, okay, what is God actually saying? Is it, what is the Word saying, right? If you're this person, then, then it's good. Because he will habitually, you habitually meditate, ponder, study by day and by night the Word. Meditating on the Scriptures of God. Right? Pondering the word of the Lord. Just what is the promise of God over your life? What is he saying over you? What is he saying about this situation in Scripture? We have become poor in the word. We, we really have. I, I, I looked at st statistics the other day about, you know, that Barna group thing. And uh, they used to do this. I don't know if they still do it. I heard they wrote a weird book, though. But anyway, they, they had this research stuff going on. And... Uh, and they would just speak to Christians and do studies on, on believers, on like how often do you pray, how often do you go to church, et cetera, et cetera. And the shocking thing is like most of the 70% of people in America who say they're Christians, most of them say they pray at least once a week. Now praying means, yeah, it could be in your car going, Jesus help me, right? So that's prayer. So that's once a week. I mean, that's shocking. Do you, <laughs> do you agree? That's shocking. Reading the Word is less. The percentage that actually reads the Word more than once a week, it, it is it's shameful, to be honest. My question is, how, how do you know what is wicked and what's not, what is evil and what's not? How do you know if you're on the right path or not if you don't have the Word? If you don't have the knowledge of the Word, if you don't have the love for the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ Himself, the living Word expressed and all of this is instruction unto him, showing us who he is, revealing who he is. But 
there's something that needs to shift in that if we want to break the season and the cycle in our life, right? Because what does he say? And, and he shall be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water or by a stream of water, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not fade or wither, and everything it does shall prosper and come to maturity. Right? Say, I want that. Oh. All right, great. So now you know how, right? But you see that it's like a tree planted by the water who will bear fruit in its season. Okay? That's already a good thing. But it's still a problem because Jesus cursed the tree even though it was not its season. Right? In Revelation 22, it speaks of trees again. But this tree is planted next to the river of life that is flowing from the throne of God, right? And there's a tree on both sides, and it carries fruit 12 months of the year, and its leaves, are, they are for the healing of the nations. That's who you are, right? It's when we're rooted at the, the river of life. It's in, when we're seated, we position ourselves in the Word of God constantly, in the Spirit, in front of the throne room where we receive mercy and grace, and constantly we allow the washing of the Word to come over us and the renewal and the refreshing of the Spirit to move in us, then suddenly you become a tree that is always in season, always bearing fruit, always having leaves to heal the nation. It's the simplest thing, but we neglect it. And suddenly you break the seasons of this world and you step into a whole different dimension with God because you're living the Word. Hebrews 1 verse 3, that all of creation is what? Upheld by the power of His Word. Right? So if your world is crashing and, trump and tumbling down every now and again, then you're not in the Word. Because it upholds. His Word upholds you when you are rooted in that place, seated in that place, and we allow the Word to feed us constantly, constantly sitting in the presence of the Lord with His Word. What is the Word saying today? What is God releasing over you today? What is God speaking out of Scripture today? You say, it's boring. I don't care. You need to do it. I really don't care. I think it's boring being a tree as well. You just kind of stand there, right? Fruit. <laughs> do you get that a tree don't work that hard to produce the fruit? It just kind of stands there, right? It's how simple it is. That's what takes us out of the seasons of this world into a supernatural season where we're constantly producing fruit, constantly flowing in healing, constantly flowing in the prophetic, constantly flowing in something different and opposite to what the world is seeing. It's the blessing of the Lord, right? I believe God wants to awaken that season over us, and we need to watch our language because I don't see in this a desert season. I see bearing fruit 12 months of the year. Always having leaves. Always. Wouldn't you like to be like that? Wouldn't it be awesome if we can actually live in that place where we function differently, right? And with that, there's a level of revelation that God's going to bring so that the Word comes alive. But it's alive. It's living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between bone and marrow, spirit and soul, and the thoughts and intentions of man, right? That's living inside of you. The Word is inside of us. It's moving inside of you. It's alive. It's powerful. It's sharp. It's, it's working and it's active, right? This is what God wants to release inside of us, to cut us loose, literally. It's like that Word comes, the sword comes, and it undoes us. It untangles us from this world. It loosens us from the soulish realm. Because I want to tell you, our biggest enemy is the soul in this season. Emotions, Right? I think it's Chris Vallotton that always says, emotions is a great servant, but a horrible master. <laughs> right? It's true. So much of what we do is wired according to emotion. I don't feel this. I feel like that. I feel like I'm actually an egg, so now I'm allowed to be one. No. 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 <laughs> you know? It's not, it's not about what you feel. The Word is supposed to separate you from that to heal you from that. So it's about what He feels about you and what He says is true. That is who you are. 
That is who you are. Not what your emotion told you when you were five years old. Not what emotion told you in this moment. Ah, she never loved me. Whatever, man. Ah, he didn't greet me. Surely he must have something against me. No, he just didn't see you. (laughs) We'll greet each other tomorrow again. You're going to be okay. All right, just be strong and move on. I know, almost the end of you, but heaven forbid that you're a tree that doesn't produce fruit. Right? But the the two-edged sword actually separates that in us. It loosens us from the soulish realm so that we can govern it. Right? So that we can produce fruit 12 months of the year in every season. Right? Because we're in a different time zone. We're in a different reality. There's this awesome story. I'm just going to tell you. Is that okay? In 1 Samuel chapter 19, right? You can go and read it from verse 18 to 24. It was another day where Saul wanted to kill David. Remember? Right? Constantly happening. Poor Saul. Okay? Poor David. Again, he wanted to kill him. So David escaped, and he ran to to the mountain. I think it's Rehoboth was the mount. I think so. Might be wrong. So he hides in this mountain where Samuel is at, right? And Saul hears, Saul hears about it, and, and he starts sending out soldiers to, you know, to go and seek him out. But this was also where the company of prophets were at. Remember that story? It's an awesome story. My kids love it because <laughs> because in the end, Saul ends up naked in the dust, and they're just always like, oh, Papa is cold bus, you know? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're still small. I just love it. I'm like, I also think it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> anyway, so, so what, what happens is Saul sends a, a company of, of soldiers to come and kill David, right? But, but David is right there on this mountain, surrounded by the prophets. And what would happen is, is these soldiers would come into this place, and these prophets never yielded. I want you to hear this. The prophets never yielded to the sword and to the shield and to the spear that came at them in the natural. And all they kept doing is prophesy. They just kept prophesying. They didn't stop. So these soldiers are running in, wanting to make war. These circumstances run at us, wanting to make war. So, and, but, but suddenly they, they, they take the sting out of the moment by staying in the spirit, staying in the season of the Lord. And just, they just keep on declaring the word of God, Shatababa, prophesying, whatever. What if they were prophesying David's kingship? <laughs> they come to kill him, and they're just saying, God says you're going to be awesome. God says you're going to be the restorer of the nation, David. God says you're going to do this. God says you're going to do that. And King Saul is sending people to kill him. And here comes the soldiers, and what do they do? The next minute they collapse, and they start prophesying. <laughs> How awesome is that? And then Saul gets annoyed, and he hears about it. He sends a second company. The same thing happened. Again, irritated, sends a third company. The same thing happened. In the end, he comes, right? And he's like, what's wrong with these guys? I'm going to sort them out, right? I'm King Saul. So Saul shows up. The next minute, he strips naked, falls on the ground, and he starts prophesying with the company of prophets so that the people go, are Saul among the prophets now? Imagine Saul prophesying David's destiny. The guy that wanted to kill him suddenly, suddenly steps into the season of God that was produced by the fruit of being by this river of life, by having the word around you, and you're surrounded by the word, and the enemy walks into it, and they're like, I don't know what to do about this. This is annoying, so I'm just going to prophesy with him. <laughs> right? That's what happens when we step into the season of God. It's what happens when we allow ourselves to go into a completely different place and we surround ourselves with the word of the Lord. And that becomes our shield. That becomes our weapon. That becomes what we fight the battle with in every season. Not our emotions, not our tantrums, not our moaning and complaining, but what is the word saying? What is the declaration of God over your life? Because that will not only give you a breakthrough that's a momentary thing, but it's going to bring sustainability in your season and the supernatural of God. A different season, a different time, a different day where you actually prosper and we really go from glory to glory to glory. 
That does not mean you're not going to have winter and spring and autumn and the natural, but it's not going to affect you. You're still going to produce fruit. Isn't that the whole point of salvation? That in the midst of adversity, we have a Savior. When everything is against us, He's for us. No weapon formed against us. What does that mean? Weapons are being formed against you. <laughs> it never said that no weapon is being formed. No, no, it says no weapon. That's different. <laughs> right? It won't prosper. It won't work. It won't succeed. Why? Because you're in the Word. You're in Jesus. You're in that place of rest, and you're sitting in that place, and God is doing something around your life, and you've literally uh, filled your whole life, your whole outlook on life, your lens on life. You filled through and filter through the Word. This is the work part. Because we want the touch. I, we're going to go for it, don't worry. But you want to sustain it, right? You don't want to come here next year again, beat up, and like, oh, I don't know, it's still not happening. No, that's not what we want, right? We want sustainability. In Job, there's a verse, and it says that the countenance, the, the depression of the people didn't change my countenance. Isn't that awesome? That, that I don't change because of what you're feeling. I'm sorry you're going through a hard time, but if I step into the hole with you, we're both going to have a sucky day, right? So at least one of us try and stay in the season of God. Because then I can actually help you. It doesn't mean I don't have sympathy with you. This actually means I can show compassion to you and I can help you to step out of that hole because I'm not in it. I don't want to be in it. And again, it's not about an emotion. It's not about, oh my goodness, it doesn't mean you're never going to feel like, oh man, I just, it doesn't feel like I'm having a good day. I, I'm not talking about your feelings here. I'm talking about the reality and the fruit that you produce despite what you feel. D do you get it? It's not about you're not going to have feelings. You're going to have feelings. That's okay. Just don't let them rule you. Don't let it be that that keeps you out of a season. And we have to go, oh, I'm just in a desert season, brother. I'm just in a dry place right now, dry and weary land. Right? But he says, what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is within you. I don't think the kingdom is dry and weary. <coughs> right? If I read about the new Jerusalem, which is the bride, which is us, which means you look funny, <laughs> right? If I read that, it, it, it sounds pretty awesome to me. And that's actually who you are. That's actually who you are, right? As we descend out of heaven, so that's what's happening in Revelation 21 and 22. The bride starts manifesting out of heaven into the earth. That's who we're supposed to be. You're seated in heavenly places, in Him, not linked to this world, rooted at the tree of, uh, at the river of life, being that tree that produces fruit in every season. And suddenly we become the expression of God on the earth, out of heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. But you need to figure out what heaven looks like then. You need to be in heaven's season so that you can produce heaven on earth. You need to be in heaven's ways if you want to produce that right here. You cannot be linked and tied down to the seasons of the earth. We have to look above the politics, above the issues and situations in our nation. And we need to become the stable ones carrying fruit in every season. What if the petrol price goes to 30 rand a liter? Well, what do you think? It would suck. I agree. But what are we going to do? Are we all leaving? Are we all, I mean, are we going to just complain the whole day? What are we going to do? What are we going to, like really, what, what are you going to do? And I mean that because you need to think about it. What if all your 
securities, the things that you think make you secure in life get stripped from you. What are you going to do? I told them the other night, I'm not trying to be funny. You know, I, we live in the village. Just last week, they, they tied up one of my, basically one of the pastors in the village, Rosa lady. They came into her shop, tied her up with cable ties, put a gun against her head and her brothers and all the drunk guys in the shop uh, next to her and robbed her, took everything. The night after that, they came again. Same three guys came to a different uh, person in our church. Same thing happened, acted like they were police, tied them up, went on. And that's life. I had to pull my whole team out and said, well, you know, I can't be there right now, so I'm not sending them in alone. That wouldn't be fair. So we're all out of there. And um, here's the thing. The only difference between my world and your world, and I don't mean that insulting, but if I'm talking about the village, is when I'm in the village, I know the police is not coming and there's no other help except God. You think you have other help. But you don't. We, we need God. We need His seasons. We need His protection. We need His mercy around us. That's what we have. We need to understand that it's God. It's going to be God that changes it. It's going to be God that pulls us through. It's going to be God that helps us through whatever season or crisis we're in. It's going to be Him. It's not the guy next to you. It's not, it's not some weird break. It's God. It's going to be Jesus, right? There's no other solution. It's going to be Jesus, and that's the only way. We, we, we cannot think otherwise because then we're bound to different seasons again. There is a season in the Lord and it's in the Word and it says we are going to be okay. For He's for us and not against us. Amen? He's going to fight the battle for us. We need to step into that place, right? And when you understand who you are in the Spirit, there's this amazing verse in Revelation verse 20, 22, verse 25. It says, and the gates, listen to this, and the gates of this city will be open day and night. I gave it to you this morning. Will be open day and night because there will be no more darkness in that place. I read that thing about two weeks ago. I'm like, whoa, this is so awesome. I don't know why, but it's really awesome. It really makes me excited, and I don't know why. And the more I started thinking about it, I figured it out. This is why. The gates of the city. Now, this city is apparently the bride, which is us then, right? Corporately and individually. It means your gates will never be shut because there won't be any more night. Now, most of us think that night speaks of evil and darkness. I don't believe that's true, okay? Because he made night in Genesis 1 before the fall of man. So it's not evil, right? He hides himself in the dark cloud, remember? Have you, have you noticed that? So is he hiding himself in evil? No, it's ridiculous. What, what is that? That speaks of mystery. It speaks of the unknown. It speaks of what has not been revealed. Okay? So I want you to get this. Are you still awake? Please be awake. All right? Because this is good. Well, I like it. <laughs> right? This is the point. When you're in the season of God, you go into a place where revelation is constantly flowing and there's no more hiddenness. <sighs> Didn't he say that to the disciples in John 16? He says, and the Holy Spirit will come and he will reveal all truth to you. Come on. Everything about Jesus can be revealed to you through the Spirit. And there will be no more night. Nothing will be hidden anymore. And your gates will be open day and night. And there's this constant flow of revelation that takes you into a next season with God. <laughs> That's who he wants us to be. Because my people perish due to a what? So, so, so get what? Get revelation. Don't lack in that area because then you're in a different season where you're constantly producing what God wants you to do. Don't stagnate in the Lord. Don't. And when I speak about revelation, I'm not speaking about lofty things even. The things that knocks the winds out of my sail the last couple of months has been the simplest of statements that Jesus made that you all have heard a thousand times, and myself too. And I read it, and I'm like, whoa, this is heavy stuff. Just a small one, like take up your cross daily, deny yourself completely, and follow me. Nothing heavy about that, though. Huh. 
Just the simplest of things in Scripture, but it speaks. It becomes alive because you're positioned yourself right at that river. You're saying, God, I want to be in the Spirit. I want to be in the Word. I want to sit here, and I'm going to not move from this place. And I'm going to be that gate that is constantly open. I'm going to be a city where there's no more darkness. And thank you that you just release constantly into me revelation and, and revelation, light, and truth so that I can progress into the things you have for me. This is what it's about, because in it is the breakthrough, in it is the key for a new season. New ideas, new ways of church, new ways of doing things, new way of healing people. What about if we get to a place where we don't have to heal people because we actually believe that we are healed because of what happened on the cross? Right? What if we step into that revelation of divine health? My wife thinks I'm kidding, but I'm telling her, I'm, I'm going for 120 years old. I'm serious. I'm just, if Moses can do it, I don't know why, why there's any boundaries on me. Seriously. I don't want to be like, you know, like that. Then please let me go, God. But, but, but if I'm still sharp like he was at 120, why not? Why not? Why not? Right? Why are you not going for a different way of life? Oh, should I ruffle your favors a little bit? I'm going to, in any way, all right? So I'm sorry, JC. But there's a guy. Have you heard about this Maharashi? <laughs> He's a believer. Don't worry. I know that name freaked you out. <laughs> so this story is pretty well documented, right, in India. This guy lives in the mountains in Nepal, in the Himalayas, right? This Maharashi. <laughs> okay? So, all right, are you ready for this? Apparently, he got born again through this famous Spanish missionary with the name St. Francis Xavier. Okay. And Francis, Xavier was this, pow I think it's, sorry, not Francis, just Xavier. Xavier was this powerful guy. I mean, he just moved in power. Just amazing what he did in Spain. And it was this massive move of God. Now, there's a weird story to Xavier as well, but I'm not going to go into all the weirdness at once. All right? So, but this guy is still alive, the Maharashi, right? The interesting thing is, though, that Xavier's ministry was in the 1600s. So this dude still appears to people. He appeared to a guy with the name Sadhu Sundar Singh who lived in the 19, I think, 20s, somewhere there. Right? He actually appeared to him. Or, I don't know, Sadhu stumbled onto this guy. And he asked him, so what is your deal? And he's like, well, I intercede. That's what I do. <laughs> He's been doing it for 300 years now. Then there's a new sadhu, Sadhu Sundar Salvaraj. Have you seen him? He's got this beard. He's got this orange cloak on. He's still preaching a lot. He's preaching with famous guys today. You should go and check him out. The same guy appeared to him. Right? I want to ask you, what did he tap into? <laughs> I have friends in India that lives in the Himalayas. They've heard about this guy. This is not rumor. This is pretty well documented, actually. You, you don't find him. He finds you, though. <laughs> right? But I'm not trying to bring hype into this. I'm just saying, what if there is something different? And the story around this guy, when Sadhu Sundar Singh met him, was... He was doing a fast in the mountains, right? And suddenly he walked in. He was really sick. He was dying. And this guy shows up out of nowhere. And this guy fed him a leaf, <laughs> like from a tree. He ate it, and he immediately got healed because the leaves will be for the healing of the nations. What if it's actually real? I don't know. Have you ever think about stuff like that? 
So he ate it and he got healed. And then this Maharashi looks at him and he says to him, listen, buddy, just tell your roommate back in Delhi that um, he needs to stop this and this and this. And I've been praying for him for the last three months. And God says he just needs to watch out. And that was the end of the conversation. He never saw him again. What if, what if there's a different season in the Lord? What if there's a different way of life when we actually start feeding on the Word of God and He starts doing something completely different in our world where we live literally on the bread of life, where we really feed out of the living water, where we really feed on, on that table that is set before us. And communion is not just something that we do religiously, but we actually get the life of God in us as we do it. As we take the bread and we take the wine and suddenly life infuses us because we're stepping into the seasons of the one who made them. Right? I want to challenge you tonight, and I want to declare it. I don't even know if this makes sense, but I know there's something that God wants to release in this area, right? There's something that He wants to do. This is the last verse. I'm going to read it, then it feels more grounded. <laughs> Genesis 1, verse 28. Do you want to go? Are you fine? I'm, I'm finishing off, I promise. Genesis 1, verse 28. You all know it. And God, and God blessed them, right? Just, do you realize you're blessed? God has always been blessing us. From the beginning, he's been blessing us. That's why Psalm 1 says, blessed. Blessed are you when, right? Blessed are you when you feed on the word, when you meditate on the Lord day and night, right? That's Psalm 1, Genesis 1. God blessed them and said to them, what is happening? The word, right? Said to them. So you're blessed and he releases the word over them. And I want you to see something about the season of God. Look at this awesomeness about the Lord. And he says to them, be fruitful. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just, it's awesome. That our original design, everything began with the blessing of the Lord and the word of the Lord. And he said, this is it. This is who you're going to be forever. Be fruitful. Right? That word means to bear fruit and to cause others to bear fruit. That's who you are. Listen to me. The barrenness needs to go. The barrenness in the spirit, the barrenness in the natural, it needs to go. You are to be fruitful, to cause things to be fruitful. This is who we are. This is the blessing and the word of the Lord over your life. This is in your DNA. You cannot get away from it. Right? This is our design. Isn't that awesome? Multiply. Listen to me. Some of you need to multiply. <laughs> Not that multiply, but that too, some of you. Some of you need to slow down. <laughs> right? Enough is enough. Come on, man. How many do you want? All right? <laughs> multiply. That means to become great, to increase, and to cause to increase. You need to increase. Some of you need to multiply business. Some of you need to multiply uh, ministry. Some of you need to multiply in every area of your life. There's multiplication that is necessary. Again, and, some, and we're not experiencing it, then I want to say something, then, including me. The, literally, I sat the other day with and I'm like, God, I'm not multiplying. What's wrong with me? I'm not, I've got en enough kids, so let's just, <laughs> right? But there's a multiplication in me that I'm, in the work and what I'm doing for the Lord. But I'm just not satisfied. It's not about numbers. It's about a depth that he wants to bring. It's to reproduce leaders, reproduce fire starters, reproduce people that will glorify his name. I'm not satisfied with that. So I'm repenting because I'm not multiplying. When was the last time you repented for not being fruitful? Because we accept it. We think it's okay not to be fruitful. No, it's not. He blessed you and he said. It's in your being. It's in who you are. And, and Jesus redeemed all of us the moment we got born again. It's, it's who you are. I want to encourage you today to say, come on, South Africa. Come on, church. This is who we are. Right? Multiply.
and fill the earth. That word fill is also replenish in some translations. That means to consecrate. That awesome. I love the idea that me and you, we have the ability to take what is wicked and wrong in the world and to touch it and to restore it to its original order. Isn't that amazing? We can bring it back to its original design that it will glorify God again. We get to do that. This is our, this is our privilege. Creation, everything, we actually get to bring it back into order with God. There's this verse in Job where it speaks about where creation is at peace with you. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> where creation is at peace with you. Why? Because it recognizes your authority. <laughs> it recognizes who you are as a son of God. Right? And subdue it. That means make it subservient. Bring into bondage. Isn't that awesome? Bring it into God's bondage. That is beautiful. I want to be in the bondage of the Lord. <laughs> right? Keep it under the way of God. This is the blessing. This is the word of God over your life. This is who we're supposed to be. Fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. That's who you are. That's in your very being. That's in your DNA. That's what's supposed to happen constantly. That was the declaration of God's season over mankind when we walk in His ways. When we walk in His path, this is who He made us to be. Right? God wants to awaken that inside of us in a whole new way. And I feel like, I don't even know, I just want to declare this over us, that this is the season. That's the season. That's the season. Right? Fruitful. Multiply, subdue, replenish, restore, make whole again. Right? Final verse. Are you still breathing? Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. Noah and his boys and wives and all of them, they just come out of the ark, and God reinstates this, right? And, but, but there's something that he adds that really excites me. He says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Verse 2. I want you to hear this. <sighs> and the fear of you and the dread and the terror of you who are fruitful, who multiply, who replenish and subdue the earth, you will be upon all of creation. <laughs> that's the season of God is where we rise up into a place of fruitfulness of produce, you know, in producing after the spirit of God and the fear of God comes on creation around us because they see who we are they wake up to that reality and they go oh my goodness what's wrong with these people everything's falling apart but they are super blessed they are super okay they are multiplying somehow they're not surviving but they're actually living in abundance there's joy on them there's hope there's blessing there's healing there's divine health on them what's wrong with them and they actually start fearing you because of the blessing of god too too much of the church is being pitied by the world Oh, the poor things, look at them. Look at me, that's an embarrassment to the cross, I'm serious. It's not, it's not right. Do you hear me? It's not right. We should flourish. And I'm not getting it, all right? I'm like excited as you are because I feel like God is speaking to me. But it begins with that place where you are planted, where you are rooted, what you are feeding on, what you're stepping into, Right? That's the point, but the reality of your season is this, okay? All right, I want you to stand. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you okay? I'm sorry about the Maharashi. I'll pull it back, but it's too late. I can't. It's on video now. Uh -huh. We need the presence. That's what we need. 
Because this blessing, this season comes out of the presence. It's not even out of it, it's in it. It's in the presence, in the presence, in the presence. We are fruitful, we multiply, we replenish, and we fill and we subdue. That's where you want to be. So I want you to just close your eyes. I don't know what we're going to do, but just close your eyes because that gives me time to think. <laughs> close your eyes. Shut up. Holy, holy, I, I speak to God, just, I want you by faith to somehow step into this. Jesus' name, Lord, oh, we want to step, we, we, we repent, Lord, we, we repent, God, we don't want to be bound by the seasons and the times that we are actually supposed to govern. We're actually supposed to subdue those things, but it's ruling us, Lord. The calendar and the clock and the... It's not right, God. And we repent. And we want to step into this realm of the blessing of the Lord of Genesis 1. We want to step into the supernatural season of the Spirit of God in our lives. Jesus, we embrace it, Lord. We reach into that place, Lord. Lord, I want to be like Thomas that reached into the wound and he touched something. He experienced something about eternity that changed him forever that moment, Lord. I don't care if he was doubting or not. Maybe he was smart. But God, when he touched you, when he pushed his hand into you, something shifted inside of him. Lord, I want to be like him. He touched Eternity, Lord. It touched a different season in who you are. And God, I want that. We want that, Lord. We, I declare that tonight. I want you to, I don't know, lift your hands up in there and just open up as wide as you can. I'm going to make a couple of declarations over you. Is that fine? Right? I want you to agree with all your heart. So God, we declare tonight, Lord, you can repeat with me. We declare, we declare tonight that my gate will be open day and night. Will day and night. There will be no more night in me. In Jesus' name. Lord, I declare that my roots will be upon the water. Shaka ba ba ba. And my branches. Will be covered in dew. Covered in dew. Always, Always in Jesus' name. Jesus name. My, season My season is the season of the Spirit. The season of the Spirit. I'm, not the earth, I'm not bound by the earth, but I bind myself, I bind myself to the throne, to the river of life river. that flows from the throne. Flows from the in Jesus' name. Shoka ba 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 ba. Thank you, Jesus. Kuraba. I want you to pray. Just start praying in the spirit. Just shataba kuraba ba ba ba. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Lord, I declare fruitfulness over these wallets right now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural release in the name of Jesus right now. Shataba kurubu shotarababa. Jesus. Shokarabababa. Kurubu shetalalalalaba. Keep going. Come on. Press in. Shotabababa. Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus, Kuru Shataba Kura Baba 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 Holy 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 Shotaba Baba Baba Kuru Shotaba Baba Sete Reba Jesus There's a replenishing or a restoration of relationships that he wants to do tonight. Okay? And I don't care what your situation is, what you went through. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who was right or wrong. I don't care. Right? He wants to replenish. 
He wants to restore. He wants to strengthen. Okay? So if you are in a place of struggle in this area, you don't have to come out. I don't, I don't need to know. But I want, I'm going to declare this over you as a son of God, believing that I'm standing in that river right now. Right? So if that's you, I want you just to just open wide your spirit. Just nothing is impossible. Nothing. Come on. Whew. So God, we release, and I speak replenishing right now. In the name of Jesus, broken relationship, be replenished right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak into Father and mother relationships, Lord, sons and daughters, Lord, into marriages, into friendships, into whatever it might be, God. I, I even speak into the good ones, and we say, be replenished in the name of Jesus, a supernatural grace on our relationships, God, like we've never seen before, Lord. Shift this thing in the name of Jesus. Life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' name, right? I want us to do one more thing, and then I don't know what we're going to do then. So I want you to turn all of you in different directions like a prophetic action that we're going to do over South Africa, right? So I want each of you just kind of twist in a direction. I don't know where east and south, I don't know where that stuff is, so just find it, right? And out of this position of the blessing of Genesis 1:28, I want you to speak into our nation, Right? I want you to speak fruitfulness into our nation, multiplication, replenishing, and the dominion over the forces that's at work in our land that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Tonight, we say, as the church, enough. It's enough, right? It takes people who get this that can do it. I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I want you to prophesy like you mean it and just start declaring over South Africa the word of the Lord, the truth about what, what this nation is supposed to be. So let's just go for that with passion, right? With passion. Thank you, God. We just speak life right now. Lord, we say that dominion, your dominion will come, Lord. The dominion over the spirit of violence, the dominion over the spirit of death and fever and destruction, God. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God, we speak over creation in this land, that He will start producing, that He will bring the richest, Lord, out of the earth, the gold, the silver, the platinum, Lord, the iron, Lord, the precious metals, Lord. Nature will start producing again after the way of the kingdom, Lord. We speak reformation in our nation. Reformation into South Africa, God. Freedom into South Africa, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, our people will be fruitful, God. Our businesses will be fruitful, Lord. Families will be fruitful. Black, white, rich, poor, I don't care, but a fruitfulness will come that everyone will have enough. Everyone will have enough in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to end the program there. Um, I feel God's presence intense, but it doesn't say anything else tonight. And then I would just love to end there. What's going to happen tomorrow is we're going to minister further. We start um, 9 o'clock until 12 o'clock. But tomorrow and Sunday, um, after the services, we will minister prophetically to everybody that needs a prophetic word. So tomorrow, we will minister after the service. Tomorrow morning, after ministering time, we'll, we'll release the prophetic and just go for that. Um, and then tomorrow night, uh, we'll minister again, but specifically the two services, tomorrow morning and then Sunday morning, uh, we will release the prophetic like never before. Is that okay with you? Fantastic. And uh, I just still feel God's presence. 
Let's just end there and um, let's just close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us tonight and you are with us always. And Lord, I pray that we will just go out tonight um, in your presence and just stay in your presence. That we will be like that tree planted, that water that comes out of your throne room. We love you, God. I pray that you will bless them, keep them, bring them back tomorrow. And we love them and we love you, Lord. Amen.